This might be our largest Google Home updates video ever. And if you own a Google Home, a Google Nest, or really any of the Nest cameras or devices, then you wanna stick around for this one. Hello automators, thanks for tuning in again. I'm Brian from Automate Your Life and today I'm going to save you time in your smart home and your smart life specifically with the Google Nest suite of devices and your Google Assistant as there are just a ton of updates here unlike anything we've ever seen really and the first thing we have to start with is actually something that you wouldn't think I would start off with and that thing is actually a skill and the reason I'm bringing it to you is because it's something that is requested the most it is essentially a weight condition or a weight function that you can use so this skill is called Mr. Home and it's spelled out Mr. and you need to invoke it by saying speak to Mr. Home and then you can also add in a keyword silently at the end to have it actually not make any noise. So you can speak to Mr. Home for 30 seconds, 30 minutes or whatever time code uh, period you would like and when you do that you're actually getting a pause in the middle of routine. So go ahead and stick this in to the middle of routines and you will have your time delay that you've been waiting for for a very long time. Start interval. A couple of new devices to tell you about. We've talked about the Chromecast Ultra 2, or that's what we're calling it now, which is an Android TV dongle, basically, and it will have a remote capability. So it won't just be your smartphone that you're just casting from. This will be full Android TV, or that's the expectation. And we are hearing one to three months with this. And the same really holds true with the Pixel 4a. A lot has been leaked about this phone, and there's a lot of excitement growing about it because it appears to be a really powerful option at a budget level. If you kind of have a split between Google Photos and Facebook Photos in terms of the photos and videos you have on those services, well then you don't have all of your pictures available at all times on your smart display. So your ambient mode can't be as good as you want it unless you spend time transferring. Now I actually created a tutorial video with a new tool that Facebook rolled out for transferring all of your photos and videos directly to Google Photos. It works great and that allows you to include all of those in ambient mode. Now I have my phone here because we have had a massive update inside of the Google Home application. This is probably one of the biggest we've ever had and it will continue a little bit as we go here. So look for a Google Home application full walkthrough as once I feel that things are kind of settled down in the application. But the first thing you're going to notice is this light section here. And I like this new interface. You'll find uh, the same thing actually on your smart displays right away if you don't already have it where it's changed from off and on there used to be two buttons sitting there and now it's just that lights interface and then you can control them off and on by group there uh, really quickly so I like that new interface I think it's a lot more useful than it was but the biggest change actually happens when you go into the settings screen now what you're seeing here are three different sections so there's general features and services general is pretty self-explanatory your home where it's at the household who's in there and then the rooms and devices which used to actually take up most of this page the feature section is much more interesting to me see number one notifications you're going to see a roll in of a lot of different notifications options coming into this section this was actually talked about fairly recently on the channel as well um, and we haven't seen that change but look for it right now you're probably only seeing the general notifications like I am digital well-being allows you to manage your uh, your filters and your downtime that's as per normal but that's on every one of your devices now the next thing is nest Wi-Fi if you have that you can actually go in and you can get all your network information it's a quick link to that now most importantly we have to talk about the nest aware section because because Google has actually modified the Nest Aware subscription now and this whole service has been adjusted. So uh, number one, 
it used to be per camera you used to pay a cost and it got really high and out of control really quickly that is now essentially gone here in Canada the cost is eight dollars for 30 day event history and then the only upsell really within Google's platform right now is double the cost for 60 day history and 10 day 24 7 recording so if you wanted those 24 7 uh, recordings that's double the cost but now that's on all of your nest cameras all of your Nest devices as well and that's the other big difference and this is US only right now but if you kind of scroll over on this page what you're going to find is the ability to not only have your your cameras know who's there learning the faces of different people but your speakers will start to identify sounds as well so you can hear breaking glass detecting other sounds like smoke alarms so those are very powerful and then emergency calling from within the app now I only see this in the US right now not in Canada not in other countries but you can start a free trial and then number two if you have the existing subscription what should show up here is the ability to convert from that old pricing model if you'd like it's a choice once you're done within the feature section the services section pretty much looks like everything you would expect here the only real difference within this is that shopping list is not just shopping list it's all of your notes and lists the works with Google program also gets a pretty good kick in the pants here as this is where you can get into managing all your accounts so there is a pretty big difference in that settings page but what you're probably noticing is there's no more settings at the bottom of that so where do you go to find your assistant settings that's actually up top right when you hit your icon there's two settings screens in here now the home app settings which is more related to the app itself not something you're going to care about a lot but then you have the assistant settings within here one app update to give you within your places what you're going to find and I don't have this yet is when you tap on a place you're able to get the traffic or the weather there so this is something that is coming to the application you may have it already this is another major update that came out just recently and this is something that I would like you guys to do and that is voice match now the new voice match is much more complex so you used to just basically say the wake word four times you're now going to be giving phrases and this is going to help your Google Assistant to understand you better the other thing that you have access to is the wake word sensitivity function when you go into it here you're able to adjust the sensitivity for each specific device now I've actually turned it up on this device because it's kind of sitting in an echoey look location now that does cause a few extra triggers when I don't want it to happen but it is hearing me better now than it was previously this isn't necessarily totally new but when you go into calendars I just wanted to show you guys this you can add all of your different calendars to be pulled from when you're asking for which events you have so this is the different calendars that are connected to the account this isn't here yet but it has shown up on some iOS phones now when you go into the equalizer settings on your iOS device you might find an assistant volume capability so this is able to be adjusted separately from your music volume Google duo continues to increase in its importance and we're seeing things like Google meet show up and Google's overall video conferencing services are getting better all the time but they have put out four specific updates that I think will actually help you quite a bit the first one is a video codec which you probably don't care about at first blush but to be honest it's probably the most impactful because in low bandwidth locations or connections you're going to still be able to use that and get a fairly decent looking uh, video signal there we talked about the ability to have 12 people on Google duo calls on the channel before it's not on the smart displays but that 12 person is an increase from the previous eight now you can also take pictures that can be shared uh, while you're in a video chat there on Google Duo and then there's some AR options and I've actually received a couple of those messages here on my smart display 
from different people and they're full AR, uh, you get lots of cute effects with them and so you can employ all of these right now. Along with the updated pricing for the Nest Aware subscription service, you'll also find the Nest Indoor Cam at $130 US and new pricing for the Nest Hub as well at $90 US. This won't hit you for a little while, but Google has actually opened up the ability for other Wi-Fi routers and mesh systems to be connected directly into the Google Assistant, give you those same commands and capabilities that they have with their Nest Wi-Fi. So we will see some vendors integrate that here coming up. One thing on the smart displays, if you have Nest Wi-Fi today, you can actually go and find your guest Wi-Fi information extremely quickly, and I don't know how I feel Feel about this from a privacy perspective but it's right there people can actually scan a QR code and they can see the full credentials they'll need to get on your guest Wi-Fi I don't have this yet but if you have music that you've uploaded to Google Play music you could now have access to upload that music to YouTube music you will see a banner actually show up at the top of the application when you first log in to the same account that you use with Google Play Music. Now this is being rolled out only to a few people at a time. Android TV boxes look poised to be getting an update where they can be included in home uh, speaker groups or, or Google Home speaker groups. Now that would make sense with the Chromecast Ultra 2 with that Android TV on it and it did show up on some and Nvidia Shield devices, but apparently has been removed. I don't have one to test with, uh, so go ahead and leave that comment down below if you have one and you have that ability. This has been really interesting to do. Stadia has been giving out uh, free trials. If you go and you do that, you can actually use the Google Assistant to launch on any of your Chromecast displays or on your phone, your smartphone. So Google looks poised to actually launch a Google payment card, not unlike what Apple did a little while ago and not that surprising. Now, why am I talking about that within kind of Google Home updates? Because I think this is one of the things that's been holding Google back or that they haven't prioritized the ability to purchase a lot of things within the Google Home system. So they've had partners for a little while in terms of uh, companies and shopping experiences here with different actions but really they haven't had a good payment service and now with that I think we will see Google move in that direction. Now that's all we're going to have for Google Home updates but our previous video actually had a ton of different features as well that you're probably not using yet because Google has been sneaking in this stuff so you can go watch that watch our last Google Home news update or you can watch our other smart home news on the channel here both of those links are on screen otherwise guys thanks for watching and of course don't hate automate